we kind of started talking offline about Neanderthals. Uh, do you have something interesting genetically, biologically, in terms of the difference between uh, Neanderthal and like the different branches of human evolution that uh, you find fascinating? Neanderthals are only one of about five branches that we are pretty confident about. One branches branch of? Of out of Africa events. So basically there's Neanderthals, there's Denisovans. What is the evidence for Denisovans? One tiny little fragment of one pinky from one cave in Siberia. <laughs> Recent, relatively recently discovered, right? Less than 10 years ago. Yeah. And those so, are like little folks, right? I, were no, they... no, 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 no. That's yet another one. Though. Homo <laughs> florensis. It had the little folks in sort of Indonesia. But then uh, the Nisovans are basically another branch that we only know about genetically from that one bone. And eventually we realize that it's one of the three major branches along with Neanderthal, modern human, and the Nisovan. And then that one branch has now resurfaced in many different areas. And we kind of know about the gene flow that happened in between them. So when I was reading my Greek mythology, it was talking about the age of the heroes, these eras of human-like you know, precursors that were wiped out by Zeus or by all kinds of wars and so on and so forth, like the Titans and the, the you know, it's, it's ridiculous to sort of read these stories as a kid because you're like, oh yeah, whatever. And then you're growing up and you're like, whoa, layers and layers of human-like ancestors. And who knows if those stories were inspired by bones that they found that kind of looked human-like, but were not quite human-like. Who knows if stories of dragons were inspired by bones of dinosaurs. And basically, this archaeological evidence has been there and has probably entered the folk imagination, migrated into those stories, but it's not that far you know, removed from what actually happened of massive wars of wiping out Neanderthals as humans are modern humans are populating, um, you know, Europe. Do you think do you think what killed the Neanderthals and all those other branches is human conflict or is it genetic conflict? So, is it uh, us humans being the opposite of altruistic towards each other, or is it uh, some other uh, uh, competition at some other level, like as we're discussing? Yeah, so if you look at a lot of human traits today, they're probably not that far removed from the human traits that got us where we are now. So, you know, this whole tribalism, you know, you're my sports team, or you're my, you know, political party, or you're my, you know, tiny little village. And therefore, you know, if you're from that other village, I hate you. But as soon as we're both in the major city, oh, I can't believe we're from the same region. My friend, come here, my family. <laughs> yeah. And like two neighboring uh, countries fighting. And as soon as they're off in another country, you're like, oh, I can't believe that. Right. So it's it's kind of funny. Like this, this tribalism is nonsensical in many ways. It's like co cognitive incongruent that basically we like kin. And selection for, for sort of liking kin is hugely advantageous genetically. Probably across all kinds of organs, all, all, of across all kinds of, of life. Yeah. So, so basically, if you now transport that to the sort of humans arriving in Europe and Neanderthals are everywhere, what are you going to do? You're going to kill them off. Uh, you know, there's this battle for territory and this battle for they're not like us. We have to get rid of them. So basically, there's a, you know, very interesting mix there. But and yet, and yet, when you look at the genetics, there's tons of gene flow between them. So basically, you know, love, romance between, <laughs> yeah, you know, near species. We have species. tribes, but love uh, uh, spans uh, uh, the gap between the it's, different tribes. It's Romeo Somebody and Juliet <laughs> across species boundaries. Sneaks away from the village to hang <laughs> out But, but, but uh, even, out before, the even before the out of Africa, there's, you know, within Africa selection, which was probably massive battles of larger and larger tribes, selecting for our social networking and savviness and, uh, you know, probably all our conspiracy theory genes are, you know, <laughs> dating back from then. And, you know, it's, so there's a lot of this mischievousness in the history of human evolution that unfortunately is still present in, you know, many ugly forms today, but probably contributed to our success as a species in wiping out other species. It just sucks that uh, we don't have neighboring species that are, you know, intelligent like us. Uh, 
that, but yet very different than us. So we have like, you know, dogs or wolves, I guess, uh, co-evolved. They, they figured out how to uh, neighbor up with humans in a friendly way and collaborate and it develop in You're time. describing this as if the wolves made a choice. Oh, It's possible yeah. that the wolves never had a say, that basically humans were just so overpowering that they had captive wolves and then at every generation killed off eight of the nine pups and only kept the one that was milder. Ah, humans. And in, it only takes a few generations to then sort of have pups that are really mild. And so the Neanderthals weren't useful <laughs> in uh, the same way that wolves I don't were. know if it's a question of useful. They were probably super useful. My thinking is that they were um, scary. That basically something that almost resembles you Yeah is something that you try to eliminate first. It's too close. Yeah. It's and close. Uh, speaking of, um, you know, species that are intelligent and sort of what's left of evolution, it is a shame, exactly like you say, that so many different amazing life forms were extinct and the kind of boring ones remained. <laughs> so if you look at dinosaurs, I mean, the diversity that they had, if you look at sub, uh, you know, uh, it, it, like there's just so many different lineages of life that were just pff, abruptly killed. And yet out of that death emerged, you know, many new kinds of really awesome lineages. 